Hello overclockers, my name's Ian Parry, or more importantly, the world famous overclocker 8-pack. You've probably been unlucky enough to watch a lot of 14th gen reviews already. So instead of doing a review here, I thought I would share some knowledge on how to overclock and tune this CPU to get the absolute best out of it. So in this video, what we're gonna cover is tuning with overclocking, the best cooling, and about performance. So, that all being said, let's get into it. So, very quickly we'll just cover what's the 14th gen about, and more specifically, what's the 14900K about. So the 14900K has 24 cores, which is eight performance cores and 16 efficiency cores, which totals a total of 32 threads. Obviously the performance cores are the only ones with hyper-threading, efficiency cores do not have hyper-threading as they're designed to run tasks in the background such as your OS or any overhead. This is essentially exactly the same in terms of the core layout as the i9-13900K, as it's a Raptor Lake refresh. So it's also on the same process in terms of manufacturing. This CPU with the 14900K has an advertised slightly higher boost clock speed out of the box. So if you're running at stock, it's gonna boost a little bit higher. What I saw in stock performance was an overall performance boost between the 13900K and the 14900K of about four to five percent maximum, which obviously this was at stock speeds and we'll put that result on the screen. Now, in my eyes, obviously this small performance uh, increase is not really good enough for an increase or a full generation of improvement, if you like. So I decided to look into it, how we can gain more performance for both your multi-core and your gaming workloads. Sometimes by disabling some features and taking advantage of extra cooling headroom. So basically, what I was doing is exploring what are the best settings to do multi-core and heavy workloads that still work for gaming, and then also exploring what's the best way to set up the CPU to get it to run at low power, really high clock speeds, and really low temperatures for gaming and single-threaded performance. And that's what we're mainly gonna cover here. So follow this advice and you'll get what I believe to be the best out of the CPU as it specifically stands today, although I have to say we are still working on these profiles and we'll include our even higher tuned profiles, if you like, or even more research in the bundles which will be coming to the shop soon. So please do check those out. So first up, the cooling. The cooling is very, very, very important on these CPUs, even at stock, and performance is heavily affected by cooling across especially multi-threaded workloads. So what I found that uh, even in stock, the power draw was very, very high, up to 352 watts are recorded in Blender for the CPU alone. So obviously that's excluding the rest of the system and throwing in uh, the memory, the motherboard, like other stuff that was plugged in the system that's not running during Blender, so because GPU's not really running. We're talking in excess of 450 watts just for the system to run. Uh, I found that a 360 IO cooler, which is the one that I normally use, uh, which is made by EK, really struggled to cool on stock often over after several minutes or even less actually hitting 100C on the CPUs and causing it to drop uh, the clock speed from around 5.7 gigahertz or 5.8 gigahertz all the way down to 5.2 gigahertz. Now at 5.2 gigahertz, the temperatures then did uh, remain stable at around 80C. So essentially it was boosted to the top speed around 5.7, 5.8, uh, hit 100C, then run the rest of the workload at, uh, at 5.2 gigahertz on multi-threaded. So obviously if you're running an hour's rendering, that's gonna make a big difference in time. If after like 30 seconds or one minute, it's already uh, choking back the clocks. So in summary, the cooling is very, very important here. Uh, even on stock, you need the best possible cooling that you can throw at the machine to enable the boost clocks to remain higher for longer. So let's cover the test system that I use for the results you're gonna see later. Uh, and I'm also, I have to clarify that the memory support that we're gonna also discuss worked well across a full range of motherboards, which I'll go into in a little bit more in a minute. So the test system included the Apex Z790 ROG motherboard here next to me. Now this is the Encore version. And as you'll notice, uh, they've gone from a white color scheme to this black color scheme on the Encore. I have to say for my particular test, I, I much prefer this uh, black motherboard and it worked flawlessly throughout my testing. 
Uh, I combined that with my usual uh, Windows 11 install with the latest VGA drivers. I had in there my usual uh, 4090 GPU. And then uh, along with uh, this motherboard, I was testing out this Corsair dominated titanium memory that you can see here. Now this is a 32 gigabyte kit that's designed to run at 7,200 megahertz. Now, what I did find across all the motherboards that I tried, which was this Apex Encore, I also tried uh, the Dark Hero, and I also tried the brand new Formula board from ASUS, and, and furthermore, I tried a slightly cheaper uh, option from ASRock, and I can confirm that now, with four sticks and high capacity memory support, as in 128 gigabytes plus, that the actual XMP will run. So we can now run like 128 gigabytes at 6,000 megahertz, which was previously impossible. So obviously the motherboard and CPU combination here is definitely giving a boost to, to four sticks memory support and performance. And I can also confirm that, that we had no problem running these uh, memory sticks, which are 7200 by default, easily at 7600. And we've managed to run other sticks even higher still. So two sticks, you can go even higher frequency than you used to. Uh, you used to have to bin IMCs to get those kind of frequencies. And four sticks, you can get running XMP even at high capacity, which is definitely a bonus on this platform if you want to run fast memory for high single threaded performance, or you want to run high capacity and still reasonably fast memory for good bandwidth. Okay, so now let's look at what we, I decided upon were the best settings for multi-core loads that are still very strong in gaming. And what I did for this was, I was looking to overclock the CPU to a 5.5 gigahertz uh, overclock across all the P cores and a 4.4 gigahertz overclock across all the E cores. What I also did was push the cache up uh, to a 50 ratio. Uh, the memory is running at 7200 and we had some tuned memory settings within the uh, tertiary timings as well. Now, what result we got from this was that the power draw was down, the heat was down, whilst the performance in all the multi-core benchmarks that we ran was up. Essentially, this power draw uh, drop was around 30% off what the stock power draw was, and the max temperature was 84C, which is a 16% decrease in temperatures, while obviously getting a gain in multi-core performance. Now, what was the gain in multi-core performance from this overclock of 5.5 stroke 4.4 P and E cores? Well, that's on the screen now. What we saw from the gaming benchmarks uh, were they were approximately the same. Obviously, the physics score, which is more multi-threaded, that yielded a 2-3% uh, improvement over the stock result. Now, obviously, what we saw with this is that overall, the more multi-threaded benchmarks were far better. And what we saw uh, with Blender, which is a test that goes on for an hour, is around a 10% faster rendering time. And we also saw Cinebound SHA-23 uh, offering up 8 to 10% better results. And the, they were doing this by obviously, at the same time, running much cooler and with 28% less power draw than stock. So with these tuning settings, in summary, for gaming, you're about the same. For physics within gaming, you're about two to 3% better. For Blender or Cinebench, which are massively multi-threaded, you are eight to 10% better, but also with a lot less power draw and nowhere near CPU throttle. So this type of overclocking will obviously work great in workstation type uses more than anything else. And obviously when we say workstation, we're meaning like rendering workloads, uh, simulation, things like Unity, heavy Cinema 4D work, heavy Houdini work, anything where you're running all the cores on the CPU at maximum workload all the time. And not only is this going to cut your workload time, it's also going to decrease your electricity bills. Although, as 8-pack, I can't even believe I'm saying that's a good thing. Okay, so that would be my settings for the workstation or the multi-thread user who still wants uh, as good as stock or very close to stock uh, gaming performance, but, but is gonna be using a lot of cores. So now let's go on to the best gaming settings, the best single-threaded stroke, not massively multi-threaded workloads. So your gamers, your CAD, your Photoshop, these kind of users who are typically needing uh, six uh, high-frequency performance cores. And how I find the best way to tune this was, 
to use uh, the turbo velocity boost and add two ratios on the Asus board. Uh, I found it better to disable hyper threading and, and typically I found it better to run between four and eight efficiency cores depending on the workload. And in this type of thing, then you could, even when the CPU was running, you know, during games, get boosts up to 6.2 gigahertz on the performance cores, which really do make a difference in your games. This was obviously the best performance in gaming and these single core kind of workloads, but obviously I do admit that you are sacrificing multiple core performance by doing that and switching off some uh, feature of the CPU. Now, what this kind of tuning resulted in, uh, like I said, was uh, TVB boost now up to 6.2 gigahertz and it maintaining like under reasonably heavy loads, even 5.9, 5.8 gigahertz, like and never dropping below. What, what that also gave us was 20% less power draw than stock. Uh, and the maximum temperature under load uh, was now down to 76 degrees, uh, which is a 24% decrease. So you can see by us manipulating the CPU to draw less power and produce less heat, yet to still be uh, great in the loads, in the workloads that we need, we can maintain that high boost clock because the boost clock is obviously determined by power draw and by heat and that's how the algorithm works. So by switching off these features that are not affecting our gaming performance, that are not affecting our CAD, that are not affecting our Photoshop and such low core count workloads, we're ma absolutely maximizing the CPU. And that really worked well in my benchmarks. Uh, so to see those benchmarks, they'll be on the screen. Now, so the standout improvements here were 15% uh, for Firestrike graphics, a really solid improvement. 12% uh, on your superposition, uh, which was at 1080p, and 7 to 10% on your Unigen uh, Valley, which again was at 1080p. Now, why am I doing 1080p benchmarks? Bottleneck the CPU. So that's that one answered, and you don't need to put it in the comments. So in, in my eyes, obviously, tuning a CPU to get an extra 10% extra performance in your games whilst running 20 odd percent uh, uh, lower temperatures and drawing 20 odd percent less power is 100% is a win. So, where can you get your 14900K Tune Like 8 pack? Here at Overclockers, of course. And we'll be making hardware bundles tuned for both single threaded gaming and multi threaded and placing them on, on our website. Obviously, keep checking out our bundle section and they'll be there as soon as possible. Uh, there might be a slight delay in that, I have to be honest, because we're still really trying to nail down exactly this single core performance stuff within the amount of efficiency cores that's the best option, uh, and whether we're going to include a switcher type overclock on the own core as well. So that takes a little bit more time to develop, but the multi-core will be out almost instantaneously. Now, what will you get in the bundles? In the bundles, basically, you'll get different memory capacities to select from, but there'll be high frequency memories. You'll get different motherboards to select from, from the range that I've tested, and obviously a range of very good cooling. So the minimum cooling on these bundles will be a 360 cooler uh, with three very good static pressure fans to mean that we can maximize results and remain stable under all workloads. Also, on the bundles, there will be uh, a section where you can select if you've got your own custom loop, uh, a custom cooling block to your own taste. But I suggest you don't pick RGB. So, in conclusion, this 14900K is pretty much the same as a 13900KS, but of course, it's cheaper and has better memory support. And as I said previously, the Asus boards that I tried and the ASRock board that I tried are all working great with high capacity memory and high frequency, which certainly was problematic on the other platforms if working at all, especially when you consider uh, the four sticks uh, in use at the same time, up to 128 gig capacity. Often you really had to clock down that memory to get it completely stable. Now it's working across all the boards from launch. And I have to say, I do like the designs on the new boards. They're in general a bit more sleek and a bit more stealthy than the last uh, iterations. Uh, and they do have the performance there once you get the CPU and start tuning the memory. What is important here though, with as with 
uh, anything with this CPU is the cooling. It's absolutely imperative. The minimum for me is a 360 millimeter AIO, but if you can stretch to uh, custom water cooling or already, already have this, that would be even better uh, and would actually produce your better boost results, especially with our TVB plus two profile, obviously, because that's determined by dynamic OC. Uh, finally, I'd like to say, I suppose, that this CPU is really uh, for the enthusiast. It's for those who want to eke out extra percentage uh, of performance and are willing to spend some time doing that. Or, of course, are willing to just get the wallets out and spend it on an 8-pack bundle, where we'll do it. So finally, as always, don't like the video, don't subscribe to the channel, don't follow any of our socials, but do check out my bundles.